Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech. And in this video, I'm going to go over an example of doing gain compensation using a Bode plot. So here's the loop transfer function that we'll be working with. We have a couple of zeros and a handful of poles. Now here's our design goals. We want to have the steady state error be less than 0.1 when the reference input is a unit ramp, 1 over s squared. And we'd like the phase margin to be greater than or equal to 60 degrees. Now let's just review where all this fits into a closed loop system. Here's our gain that we get to fiddle with. That it's really the design process is picking that value of k. Then we have our loop transfer function and unity feedback. We have a reference input and an output, y. Now let's go ahead and play around with this requirement, the steady state error requirement, see what we can do with it in terms of relating it to this value of k. So let's see, for r equal 1 over s squared, it says that the steady state error is equal to 1 over kv, where kv is the velocity error constant, and it is equal to the limit as s goes to 0 of s kgl, everything in that forward path. And so that's equal to k over 5, and so the steady state error is equal to 5 over k, and if that's going to be less than or equal to 0.1, then it says that k has to be greater than or equal to 50. Now since we're going to be working with Bode plots, I might as well convert this into decibels. So I'll use k subscript db for the value of this k in decibels. And so that would be 20 log 10, 50, and that's about 34 db. Great. So now let's just go ahead and make a Bode plot using this loop transfer function and investigate some designs. So here I've coded the transfer function into MATLAB, and there we go. And now let's go ahead and make a Bode plot of it, and I'll have a grid superimposed on it also. Before we do any design, let's just look at this Bode plot and think about what's going to happen. As we increase k, this magnitude plot is going to shift up. If we decrease k, the magnitude plot shifts down. What that does is it changes this point. That's the gain crossover frequency. And that tells us what our phase margin is. For instance, right now this Bode plot is constructed for k equal 1. And it has a gain crossover frequency of roughly 0.2 radians per second. If I come down here, it tells me that my phase margin is roughly 70 degrees. Furthermore, no matter how I change this magnitude plot, no matter where this gain crossover frequency ends up, whether it be here or back here, my phase margin, the amount that this phase plot is above negative 180 degrees, will always be positive. This means that I can set the gain to anything and the closed loop system will always be stable. That's good to know. The design process is the act of shifting this magnitude plot up and down so that the gain crossover frequency gets to a point that satisfies our phase margin requirements of 60 degrees. Now we already computed that the gain needs to be at least 34 dB in order to satisfy the steady state error requirement. The way to use the Bode plot for that piece of information is to find the location where the magnitude is negative 34 dB, roughly there at 5 radians per second. If I come down now to the phase plot, this is going to be the resulting phase margin, roughly 180 minus 104 degrees, or 76 degrees of phase margin. So, if I shift this magnitude plot up by 34 dB, my gain crossover frequency will be right here, and my phase margin will be 76 degrees. I will have satisfied the gain requirement for steady state error and the phase margin requirement. So let's take some notes as to what we've learned so far. For k equal 1, we have a gain crossover frequency of roughly 0.18 radians per second. So for k equal 1, we have omega gc, about 0.18 radians per second. And the phase, the corresponding phase margin, 
is 180 minus 110, so roughly phase margin is 70 degrees. Now let's go to 34 dB like we had a moment ago in both the magnitude and the phase plot. And so now we have K equal 50 or K dB equal 34 dB and we have a gain crossover frequency of about 5 radians per second. And the phase margin is roughly 75 degrees. Now it's also interesting to note that if I close the loop with a K of 50, my closed loop bandwidth should be about 1.5 times that gain crossover frequency, or about 7.5 radians per second. That's just a good thing to keep track of as you move through the design. Again, what's happening here is we are imagining that this magnitude plot shifts up so that the gain crossover frequency is now here, and so our phase margin is now at this point. So just to summarize this design, we have a gain of 50, satisfies steady state error, we have a phase margin of 75, that satisfies our phase margin requirement, and that design is good. But I can get other designs. For instance, any K above 34 dB such that the phase margin is above 60 degrees is a valid design. For instance, if I drag this down to negative 120, right at 60 degrees of phase margin, and then move this to that gain crossover frequency of 7.2 radians per second, roughly here, now I have a gain of 37.4 dB. So let me write this design down too. So KdB is 37.4. The physical gain K is 10 raised to the power of 37.4 over 20 which is roughly 75 and the phase margin is now 60 degrees. So this is also a valid design. Any values of K between this value of 34 dB and this value of 37.4 dB are valid designs. They will have satisfied the steady state error and the phase margin. Now let's use CISO tool to explore these designs further. So here I have a root locus on the left and a Bode plot on the right. But let me expand this out a bit so it's easier to see. Now before we go ahead and investigate the two designs that we came up with, k equal 50 and k equal 75, Let's look at this Bode plot in root locus for when k equals 1 and just do some sanity checks. What it shows us is that the phase margin is 70 degrees, and that is exactly what we got off the Bode plot that we looked at earlier. Also, the gain crossover frequency is 0.185 radians per second, and again, that's what we obtained earlier. If we look over here at the root locus, we can see our closed loop pole locations. We have two poles here and two poles here. These two poles have a fairly low natural frequency. That's the distance of this red square to the origin. Whereas these poles have a much larger natural frequency. Again, this distance from the square close to the pole to the origin. Now let's go ahead and look at that first design for k equal 50. Now I could grab this magnitude plot and shift it up and try to find that point or so that's what I'm doing now. Or I can just go to this window and plug in the gain of 50. It shows it as C, but that's actually our K. So it adjusted the Bode plot, shifted the magnitude plot up, and let's just do a double check. Our phase margin is 75 degrees, and that's roughly what we had over here in the scratch pad and the gain crossover frequency is 5.2 radians per second, and that's pretty close to what we had here. Now one thing that we also did is we estimated our closed loop bandwidth of 7.5 radians per second. In CISO tool we can look at that real easily. If I go over to analysis and select closed loop Bode, there we go. Now I can select a point on here, go to the negative 3 dB point, and that will be our bandwidth. 
and it shows it as 8 radians per second, which is fairly close to 7.5 that we estimated from before. Now we can also switch this plot into a step response. We know that the design satisfies the ramp requirement of steady state error, but it's also rather useful to look at step responses sometimes. And there it is. Now, the step response has some interesting features. It has a high frequency component right here. And that's due to these closed loop poles over here, the high frequency ones. And it has a low frequency response. And that's due to these low frequency poles. We can also annotate this plot with things like the peak response, the settling time, and the rise time. And if I hover over those squares, we can jot down these various characteristics. So the rise time is 0.34 seconds, the percent overshoot is 13, and the settling time is about 6 seconds. So here we have a rise time of 0.34 seconds, percent overshoot of about 13%, and settling time of roughly 6 seconds. Even though that wasn't part of the design requirement, it's good just to note it. Now we can also add to this plot the input to the plant. That tells us how much actuation is needed to achieve this design. And here we can see that the peak of that actuation is about 50. So I'll jot that down too and just circle it. Now let's go on to the other design here with k equals 75. So to get that, I'll just punch in 75. <coughs> and it updated the Bode plots and the step responses. Now we can see that the amount of actuation I need is 75, so I'll circle that here. For comparison, I'll get rid of the green lines so that I can see this better. And now look what's happened. The high frequency component has been exaggerated due to the higher gain. The time domain performance characteristics have changed. So the rise time is now 0.2 seconds, percent overshoot is about 9, and the settling time is about 5.4 seconds. So rise time is now 0.2, percent MP is about 9, and the settling time is about 5.4 seconds. So let's just summarize what we have with these two different designs. For the higher gain, we need more actuation compared to the lower gain case. However, the step response performance got a little bit better, even though the step response performance wasn't part of the design objective. Two designs that satisfied the requirements, that it's often important to look at other characteristics of the response to determine which one to pick. Let's just do one last thing. What I'm going to do is grab hold of this magnitude plot and shift it up so that we get lower and lower phase margin. And look what's happening over on the left to the step response. I'm getting more and more oscillation. I'm exciting those high frequency dynamics more and more. And I can certainly go the other way. If I shift this magnitude plot down, now the high frequency behavior of the system is essentially not excited at all and is dominated by the low frequency dynamics. So just to summarize, we started out with a loop transfer function, used the Bode command to explore two different valid designs, and then explored those designs further using CISO tool. The main point to remember for gain compensation in a Bode plot is that it is the act of moving the magnitude plot up and down, which is really all about shifting the gain crossover frequency left and right and changing the phase margin. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.